Hello, everybody. Welcome to another MXGP TV virtual studio show from home, part of our uh, MXGP at home series that continues, obviously, despite coming out of the lockdown on a uh, much more regular basis. But uh, my name is Paul Malin, Lisa Leyland down there in Barcelona, uh, where today we have uh, our guest will be uh, Clement de Salle, Monster Energy Kawasaki racing team. We'll meet him in a moment. But Lisa, uh, first of all, um, is it me? Or has this week gone really, really slowly? Is it just dragged out? Because that's how it feels for me. Yeah, you, this week, this whole year has just been dragged <laughs> out, hasn't it? It's not the week, Paul. It's the year that's gone slowly. I mean, yeah. but it is, it is kind of like light at the end of the tunnel now, you know, the updated calendar. So I'm starting to feel good. Getting back into it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, obviously... Um, We'll talk about the, the new calendar in a moment, but before we do, let's meet our guest then, uh, Clement de Salle, Monster Energy Kawasaki Racing Team, and he was on the studio show actually in Valkenswaard four months ago, so great to have him back, but uh, Clement, welcome to our virtual studio show. Um, now, as Europe continues to open up, how was lockdown for you, um, and was it nice to spend some quality time with Mrs. Panda and Emma Panda? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you for welcoming me, and... Um... It's uh, yeah, it's been a really difficult time for everybody, but uh, for me it was still okay. I could organize myself really good with training and then keep the rules of uh, everything. And uh, it's good to to see you back, uh, actually, and um, good time. Hopefully, we will be uh, racing soon and have uh, some great time, like uh, like in Valkenswart when we see each other. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's not only pandas in your house, is there, Clement? You have quite a few animals, like you have goats, you have chickens. How many actual animals do you have in the panda, at the panda zoo? No, actually, you know, I don't have chicken. That's, um, that's my goal in the future, to have chicken. But I have to organize, really, it's really good, you know, because we, we still travel a lot and that's not easy to, to, to be organized. So I have my dog, one cat and two goats for the moment. So, but, uh, okay. yeah, that's uh, I really enjoy, you know, the contact with them, and uh, that's nice. Yeah, so, yeah chickens, chickens are high fun. maintenance. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially, you know, with the fox who come, and sometimes, you know, yeah, fox come often to the chickens. So, uh, you know, I'm they like they like chickens. Also, so, yes. <laughs> no, <laughs> um, no, yeah. Well, look. Before we start, we finally had a new calendar released yesterday. Um, oh, on Thursday, I think it was, Friday, yeah, yesterday. Um, there we go. If this is you seeing it for the first time, uh, viewers at home, we will start on the 9th of August in Latvia, or restart in, uh, in Latvia. And obviously, we've got three there in Latvia within the space of a week, 10 days. Uh, we go to Turkey. We've got two in, in Faenza. We've got three at Lommel in Belgium. Uh, we go to Mantua, Spain, Trentino, and Argentina. We've got motocross nations as well uh, back at Matali Basin, Great Britain. Um, pretty interesting calendar, that. So um, what are your thoughts on that, actually, uh, Clement? What are your thoughts on the calendar? Well, actually, it's, it's good. I think they make a, a good job, you know. Uh, it's um, not easy with that situation. So, you know, we have every, every, they had to, to work on it to, to go on country that it's uh, possible and then make, uh, make all happen. Or just a Lommel tree time, maybe it would be good to go uh, somewhere else in Belgium. <laughs> but um, I mean, you know, not not on the tree time. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for the rest, it's uh, it's okay. You know, it's uh, I think it's good. Now that uh, this calendar is out, it's it's great for me to um, to get like more specific training on it, and uh, we know I know what I'm waiting for and what what. Oh, I have to prepare myself for. For this uh, new calendar and new format, I think for for GP. Yeah, I guess because that's. That, I was gonna say that's. Been, sorry, Lise, but that's been the thing, hasn't it? People have been unknown in terms mm. of what they need to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. That that's what's really strange, you know, because you keep training. I mean, with a certain program. I mean, if I speak for myself, and uh, at the end, you know, it's never come. You know, you, you mm. don't know, and then race are postponed so it's it's uh, really difficult you know you keep training but you actually don't know why and that's uh i mean you know why but you know you don't have yeah. the date and the, the goal <laughs> there with uh, like after winter yeah 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 
I know well, that's I mean. the thing. Some people will like it. Some people won't like it. But I think overall, it looks like the best solution for the teams, the riders and the championship. And I think the most important thing to focus on is that we are all going to go back to doing what we what we love doing. And that's a huge positive. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's true. You know, it's difficult for me. I all the time said to uh, Andrea and Yeah, you know, I, I'm used to live with a kind of adrenaline all the time and then with pressure there and that suddenly it's not there anymore. So it's, uh, you have to adapt, adapt yourself and uh, that's not, not, not so easy. But, um, you know, like I said, we are still in that situation. We are okay, you know, we are healthy, everything good at home. So that's, uh, that's important. Yeah. Well, look, we mentioned at the start of the show that uh, the last time you were on was Falcons Wad, which was already uh, the first weekend of March. Um, and we spoke about Matley Basin, obviously, the first GP. And I know there were one or two mistakes from you um, during the weekend, but overall, were you pleased with your performance when you think about it now? Because obviously you had a long time off the bike um, and you came in maybe not so many races. So, actually, were you okay with how things went when you think about it now? Yeah, it, uh, I started the, the season uh, actually okay. I see some negative uh, negative point that I work on, on me. So, I think that I had to, to work. It's uh, my start. Also, sitting with the bike and my start. So, I was working on it, of course. But uh, I'm really happy to see how I went back after the, the last, uh, last season and the, the crash of last year. So that's that's great. I, I had a good feeling with um, with my riding, with me on the bike. So that was uh, that was good. Give me good satisfaction of my job, or always my feeling on the bike, and that's uh, that's really good for me. If I could have good start with this, I think I can do really good, good and better thing. So I'm uh, confident, and I was working on points that I had to work. Well, how was your fitness in England? Because you said on the studio show in Holland that you were still making progress and like you couldn't even run, for instance. No, it's, yeah, this is, uh, this is true, but you know, I, I have other sport next to it, so mm. that's no problem. You know, I, I'm not a runner, so I don't care. <laughs> but uh, that's, uh, no, I, I couldn't, I couldn't uh, manage it and no problem. I had uh, some other option and uh, yeah. I keep... I could do, and now it's actually better, you know, because this injury was really, really long, and then with time, you know, it's uh, better and better. So that's that's uh, now even better than than the beginning of the season, let's say. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know you mentioned your training earlier a little bit, but with no racing for the last four months, have you managed to get back to a hundred percent for the season to, before the season to restart? Uh, I would say yes. I have a really great feeling. Uh, I could have time to uh, have specific training and also rest. So that that's great. Uh, I would say it's uh, not so bad. One what's one hundred percent after you know <laughs> that we yeah. all time search for it. So, but I have a good feeling. I don't uh, put pressure on myself. So you know, I believe in me and um, work on my start. And if everything goes well, you can make really good things. So yeah, yeah. it was okay. All right. Well, obviously, the second round was uh, in Balkans Wad. Difficult conditions there for everybody. A lot of rain overnight, um, heavy track conditions. Six in race one. Uh, how difficult was the track to actually race on? Not necessarily ride, but to race on. Uh, yeah, the conditions in Balkans Wad were really difficult, uh, really wet. But... Finally, it was it was great. I was concentrated on me, and uh, it, again, you know, I will say again one thing that I just said: if I could have better start and save some energy and and time to come back, I would have I could have been better, and that's yeah. uh, that's a shame. And, but it's okay. It was actually good race condition were really difficult. And also in second moto, uh, <coughs> problem in the start with uh, Glenn. And we had to come back uh, from really far, and I had a strong race. And like you said, like you see, you know, conditions were really uh, particular, and you can do a mistake so easy. But um, I was actually at the end happy of uh, me, and also the on the bike uh, 
this, on my way, yeah. We just saw there coming on to the, the start straight. Uh, this is later on in the race, um, just before, before Paulan passed you. But did you have a problem at that stage? Had you fallen because you were looking down at the, the brake pedal? Did you get caught in a rut? Was there a problem there that distracted you? Ever yes, so actually, uh, the really big problem uh, coming from my pipe, you know, uh, ah. and I lose power, actually. So I was, uh, you know, you need the, the full power of your bike in this condition, and I mm. lose a little bit. So I was afraid that uh, it will uh, penalize me uh, more and then that I will uh, lose place uh, easy, you know, because I make the job to be there. And I was really good and hoping for better. Yeah. And finally, uh, something disturbed me. But finally, it was okay. I, I make a good, and, a good motor. And actually, you just mentioned uh, the problem at the start in race two with, with Glenn Koldenhoff. Um, it looked like he was trying to jump on your bike and, you know, <laughs> yeah. be like a passenger. But Hopefully, because... so he was okay after that because he was really <laughs> looking impressive. Yeah, yeah. But when you uh, came through the field so strongly in that second race to eighth place finish, were you actually more pleased with that, that performance? because it was a strong performance on a circuit that was not easy to ride, not easy to race, difficult to overtake. Um, but you you found you had to dig really deep to get that result. Yeah, at the end, it made me really happy because I was feeling strong, good that I come back from, from far away. But in another end, you know, I'm, um, I'm, uh, I wanted more, you know, and, and eight mm. for me was not uh, really not enough. But, uh, sure. you know, sometimes you have to see uh, balance in one moto and look at the complete moto. So, you know, that's also something in my career that I try to improve myself because sometimes I'm a guy who, who is not happy and see all the time the negative thing to improve myself, you know. And that's kind of my character. So that was a thing that I had to also to try to improve because sometimes you have to see the positive thing and this make a better package to go in front, you know. So that's something that I, small thing apart, small uh, thing that I try to improve myself with this. And so to answer you with that moto, it's, yeah. uh, it was a good moto at the end and, and a good GP because um, I finished on two wheels and we did it with those conditions with some massive points. So it was okay. Yeah. Well, you're currently fourth in the championship. Not a bad place to be when we start in Latvia. Do you like the track in Kegums? Because you've been on the podium three times there and you won there in 2010. Yes, I like the track. I like the place and it's, uh, it's good. The ground is really, really nice. So, like you said, I'm fourth. I also know how I could work uh, those uh, past month. So, um, I will tell you I'm confident and... I don't, I don't have so much pressure on myself because, you know, I just want racing and have good time on my bike. If I have this, I know that I can do a good thing and then have good results. So if the start is there also, that can make great thing. And uh, I'm really positive uh, to come back racing. Mm. Obviously, we mentioned the calendar and we, don't, we do start in Latvia at Kegums. And we are there three times on the Sunday, on Wednesday, and then on Sunday again. Um, how do you think that this will work? Do you think they will change the, the circuit, you know, one way for one GP and then the other direction, the next one? Um, is that something that you would be happy with? Um, I will take it like it is, but I don't think in Kegums they will be able to do it because, you know, you have like kind of tabletop and other, uh, other things. So then to change the takeoff and everything is not easy, especially on there. Like another example, um, they can change some detail and that mm. can can make it good. I think it can be good organized, you know. But something like Lomel, I will say, I will answer you yes, because it's more easy to go the other way, change uh, in a short time uh, the track condition, and mm. uh, that's uh, so in Latvia, no. But I I think it's anyway will be a good thing to for them to manage it. Uh, yeah. and do do a good job yeah and obviously for those people who are watching now and have seen the calendar and are looking at wow three gps in in lommel in you know sunday wednesday sunday and uh, also latvia three times fienza twice um we are going to be running just a one-day format for mx2 and mxgp everything on 
one day. So I guess free practice will be also a time practice maybe. And then your races. Um, it'll be very similar to what we had with um, Matali, um, Matali Basin, I guess, you know, because we, we lost pretty much one day uh, with the weather on the Saturday, but on Sunday it was free practice, time practice, and then your races. So um, do you, Clement, need the extra time? Do you need the two days on the bike with the qualifying race and the time to set up? Or are you going to be okay with, you know, the one-day format? No, no, actually, I'm, I will be okay and happy, actually, because I, it's the thing that I said a um, few years ago that I would say that it's a good idea because you have, uh, like, the track, they can make a better better condition on the track, you know, it's not getting rough like this. Mm. And also for the new new calendar, it's better. And, uh, you know, a few years ago, I did, like, a few races in, uh, in America and mm. only one day format, and I really like it. So practice in the morning, race in the afternoon, and I could see that it it was really good also, like for Hyder and for the public. So this is I I enjoy at that time, and uh, I think it's good, good format for for the GP too. Also maybe for the future, but especially with the new calendar that you have like sometime two GP in you know, one week and one day time, you know. So yeah. it's it's okay for me and. Uh, good thing to to know and then you know you can adapt your training a little bit on, on this too because now it'll be again something different okay right well look um you know i know you're going to be busy today um what is the plan for you and the team from uh from now obviously you can change your training program not a problem but some riders are going to be, you know, we saw last week in riding Czech championship, some might ride the French championship. Will you do one or two races before you, you restart in Latvia? Um, that's not my plan. That's not our plan yet. First of all, you know, I keep my rit now. Now that I, uh, we know the calendar, I will adapt myself on it with my training program and uh, get some specific training on the bike also for this. So we don't have any racing uh, plan yet or to go in France or something. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it will be, uh, it will be necessary for, for me to do it. Okay. So I will keep, uh, like I said, training specifically and then uh, prepare for the, for the GP. The, I mean, new, new season will start. Yeah, will start, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Will okay, start. well, come on. We have some um, questions on Facebook for you. Uh, the first one is from DC Junior 791 and he says, what inspired you to become a motocross racer? Yeah, thanks uh, DC Junior for your question. Uh, that's, a, that's a nice uh, question. You know, um, I would say I'm, I'm born between bicycle and bike uh, with my dad and then... Uh, then I would time watch watch him and try to do it, and then finally I, I had the first bike, and I and I try, and I really enjoy the 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 feeling, and you know that was something that I really enjoy to do. So in school also, they, when they ask you what you want to do in the future, so I say a pro motocross rider, but you know they look at you <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. But finally, you know, I, I could do what I love in my life. So I would say. Is the because I'm born in this with my parents, but with my dad, but I never get pushed for it, and I really do everything step by step, and finally I, I work for it with uh, the rules that uh, that you need to respect when you want to do something in life. So I would say it, it's a nice uh, nice story to to explain. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. I'm really happy. I, Actually, that I could do this in my life, and um, that I do what I love in my life, you know. So that's a, that uh, that's great, and uh, that's a great feeling. Exactly. Okay. Uh, we have Fons MX five two four. What's it like to have Romain as a teammate? Um, yeah, it's actually good. You know, um, we have. Um, I know that in the past we had some uh, fight on the track and everything, but you know that that's racing, and it's uh, you know when I have fallen with somebody, we we speak about it and that's it. But uh, now uh, everything is clear and we have uh, respect, 
so that's great you know uh, i have to say it's uh, it's good it's good uh, for the moment everything is going okay we have a good uh, relation when we see each other so that that's nice and it's nice also to to have good feeling in the team you know like uh, to have it's important also for the complete team and the job that we are doing so that's uh, that's great i have to say uh, it's good Okay. Uh, Bam Bam 23 MX, why the number 25? Is it sentimental to you? Um, the number 25 because when I was a little kid and riding in France, I had the number 25 in one time. And then uh, finally I started my first, uh, season, my first GP season with the number 35 that they give me. And I finished 25 for my first year of GP, you know. So mm. I go for the 25 after it. And then actually at that time, remember me that I had the 25 when I was a little boy. So, so I keep the 25 and it was a number who was really good uh, to me. So it yeah. became uh, 25, my, my number. Nice. Okay. Uh, Rob Allen, uh, about 10 to 5 minutes before gate drop, what's on your mind? Um, I'm really uh, concentrate on things that I do uh, all the time the same, you know, with my preparation of my gear, with the, uh, I stretch a little bit, get warm up a little bit, but I all the time do the same thing. And um, so I'm thinking just to, of my thing to, to do without to forget anything. And uh, of course, I'm thinking to, do, to make the whole shot <laughs> because yeah, uh, obviously. That's, uh, and then have a good race, you know. So I try to have a good mix between uh, the pressure of the start and uh, have a good start and a good race. So really, f really focus and in my uh, in my thing actually. Okay, uh, Daniel Kochik, uh, why do people call you MX Panda? He looks like a panda. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> no, actually, uh, you know, got those little ears. <laughs> No, no. I, I enjoy to eat, you know. I enjoy to eat. I mean, li li like a lot of people, I will say, no. I think so. <laughs> but I enjoy to eat and eat good thing. And, you know, for me, eat with your family and everything, it's all time a good moment. So that yeah. was great. So all time like to eat. And then one time, some past year, we go in France to a show. And they, it was a documentary about Panda. And they say, or the panda is eating 14 hours in a day, you know? And my friend look at me and say, oh, you are a panda. <laughs> so, you know, it starts like this from there, actually. Yeah. And then it's panda, you know? So that's just... Uh, <laughs> and, and also, Not... you look like a panda, so... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and also, also, he likes to eat leaves <laughs> from the tree. <laughs> no, no, but it's, uh, it was actually a nice... Uh, Nice thing, and uh, yeah. I like animals, so it was it's a nice animal. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, make Bayer six eight nine. Uh, I remember you rode a big bike pretty early in your career. Why was that? Yeah, that's also a nice question. Thanks for your question. Um, first of all, in um, in GP, all the time I ride four fifty. And because I get the opportunity like this, and I was really young, like 16 years old on the 450, but I had no choice, you know, the, the opportunity was like this. And, uh, but I took it, and I all the time like big bike, you know, already uh, really young. I, I trained easy on, on the 450 bike, on the 250 two-stroke, and I enjoy to control the massive power there. I really like it, so... Actually, I, uh, when I get the opportunity of my first year of GP with the 450, I, well, I, I didn't know exactly because I was really young. But then I say, okay, the opportunity is there. I will go for it and then do everything step by step because I'm really young. That's why in the, those first year, this first year, I go all the time, often outside in the start, you know, to minimize the risk. And, uh, but finally, I'm, I'm happy... Um, Oh, I did it because uh, I did everything step by step and uh, I learned a lot that uh, first year with a big bike and then, mm. yeah, then after the first year I was feeling more comfortable and I know what I can do and then, so that's why, uh, that's why the reason, you know, first of all, because I like big bike and I also get the opportunity like this, so it was okay. Uh, actually okay for me. 
Okay, well, thanks everyone for your questions, but we now have some uh, photos for you, come on. And maybe you can just tell us what's going on in these photos and what they mean to you, okay? Yeah, okay, yeah. All right, so the first one. <laughs> what's happening here? <laughs> what's going on? You look very focused. Yeah, yes, I'm focused. I'm focused to learn um, um, the theory of uh, driving a plane, uh, yeah. ultra light plane. And uh, it's something that uh, I really enjoy, you know. Uh, actually, in the middle of July, I will have my first test of it. So. Oh right. Yes. Yeah, so I hope uh, it will be okay. Brilliant. And uh, yeah, it's something that I all the time like uh, actually to to fly. And I um, I didn't know that was really possible. When I look at it, you know, I was thinking it's not really possible, you know, taking a lot of time actually. Uh, uh, also, if you want a plane or rent it, it's like really complicated, you know, to organize everything. Mm. So I was not feeling it's, um, let's say, uh, so easy to learn. And especially now, you know, we uh, I have a busy life, you know, with motocross. Yeah. But then I go, I get some information of uh, ultralight plane uh, rule. And I say, okay, it's actually... Uh, uh, possible and quick, you know. The guys tell me if you want to learn, I go in a club, ask a few questions, and the guys say, Okay, if you want to learn, you, you we can start uh, tomorrow. I mean, tomorrow in one week, yeah, yeah, yeah. some paper, but quick. <clears throat> and I say, Okay, why not? You know, so I actually uh, try one, one try with um, one try with the guy, and then step by step, I also do it step by step. And now I, uh, I start to learn, and I was already alone on the in the air, uh, flying yeah. alone, just around the the, the place. And uh, but still, it's a great feeling, and uh, I enjoy to learn this. You know, when I'm like this, it's a time that I can really think and be focused of something else, and that's also a kind of uh, rest. You know, yeah. and also in my personality, it's something that um, I have to find thing. Uh, that I try to rest, you understand what I mean? Because I, yeah. I'm kind of guy who is like uh, really active and never can stop. And that was also something that I have to improve myself in the past year to to calm, sometime calm down and then rest for to be better the other days and GPs. So it's a good a good mix, a good feeling that I have with this. So that's a, that's, that's a nice a nice picture. Yeah, <laughs> nice good luck. Escape. Yeah, yes, good luck with yeah, the yeah. exam yeah. as well. Yeah, thank you. On. Thanks. Good luck with Thank that. You. Okay, next uh, photo we have is is uh, <laughs> what is this? This is a little dog. Is that your dog? Yeah, it's my dog. Not uh, a little one. It's uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's my dog. It's um, I have a good connection with her um, all the time, every day, and uh, special for me. I like the connection that I have with my uh, animal. Um, I have. Um, you know, I'm a guy who likes the nature, animal, and uh, have, uh, it's relaxing me and uh, sometimes help me uh, a lot. And uh, that's uh, especially with uh, with Mila, my dog. I I get her when uh, we go in an asyl, safer, let's say. And she was really skinny and everything. So so you know, we I have a picture where like like before I get her and then. Uh, after uh, you know like she's now so it's really really nice to see how she is and also the improvement that she she did you know and also mm -hmm. what i see in, in her eye when when she look at me now it's like yeah. she never uh, forget uh, what happened at that time and that's uh, that's great and that's mm. nice it's funny because on your bag there you've got the monster kawasaki and then you've got animal lover as well yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, with the in the oh flower, you know, it's like a head of uh, a dog. And, yeah, uh, yeah, nice, Aww. really nice. Yes, that's really nice. Yeah. Nice touch. That's a friend who did it for me in uh, for Argentina. So I thank I thanks him in the in the same time. This uh, bird patch Good. for Lovely. Argentina nineteen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Next uh, photo. What do we have? Ah, here we go. What's going on here? You've got. <laughs> <laughs> He's just chilling. He's just chilling, chilling man. hanging out. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's nice. It's just a good time, uh, you know, in the period of um, when we could restart to to ride, and then we went in uh, Allman in Belgium to ride. So it was um, 
great time with uh, Roma there. We were on the same track that day. So it was cool, you know. I I also, you know, try to enjoy the life and uh, yeah. have, uh, have good time, you know, between uh, in the mot in the on the moto and uh, after the time out of the mo of the bike, you know. So that's that's great. Okay. Cool. Uh, I think we have a video week. now, don't we? Do we have a video coming up now? Yeah. Where is this video? Oh. All right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you take your training seriously. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. That was funny. You know, you can see my, my arm, yes? Yeah. <laughs> it was my, uh, my, my wrist. Yeah, it was my wrist. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I have a friend who have like... Um, so this strike and uh, to change my uh, my mind change some ID I go one day with him um, during I was uh, injured and uh, I could drive the, the truck and everything so because I have my license of big of, of truck mm -hmm. so um, it was it was a great day and then it was funny because he, he could um, put the weight of the truck you know really down and then the actually the balance of the truck is like this so that's what's funny to do <laughs> you know, I'm really yeah. strong now. Really yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that, that's leg press right there. Yes. <laughs> yeah. When I saw it, it did make me laugh. Yeah, yeah. it's good. Cool. It's good. Cool. Impressive. Yeah. yeah, he won't he won't be doing that today anyway. <laughs> okay, right, well, I look, think that's yeah. it for the uh, videos. Thanks for those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, and we are out of time actually because uh, Clement does have a busy day. He just has to uh, disappear and, and get on with his day. But uh, Clement, thank you for joining us today uh, from Monster Energy Kawasaki Racing Team. And we will see you at a racetrack in the next few weeks. Yeah, you thank, you thank you no too. Thank you too. It was good to see you again. And uh, and, uh, and you too. Really soon. Yeah, thank you. And um, bye we'll bye. see you again. But um, from me, Paul Malin from Lisa in Spain, of course, uh, Christian and Gabriele, our production crew there in Italy. Thanks. Good job, as always. Uh, we'll be back for another studio show next uh, Saturday. So uh, from me, from Lisa, we'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye for now. Bye. See you.